the Stanford Charleston race coming up soon. This is the 2013 College Sailing APS Team Race National Championship presented by Laser Performance, the official boat supplier for college sailing. And if you were with us a little bit earlier, you saw a preview of that Z420. I think the Z is for Zeke. Yes, I believe it is as well. I'm really leaving my legacy here in college sailing. The Z420, an experimental boat that's been developed uh, over the past several years from input from college sailing uh, teams and, and sailors, coaches. Well, you actually talked to Adam Werblow about that um, earlier this season. Uh, looks like a pretty cool boat. Yeah, it looks really cool. And that was one of my m definitely more fun interviews I got to do with Coach Werblow there. He's got a lot of uh, valuable insight, I'd say, on everything. Uh, but, yeah, that boat looks really fun, really cool. I hear good things. And we'll get uh, we'll get more details about that and um, and some of the other sponsors, too, that have been, uh, that have been putting this event together. It's Perry Topsetter, who's on the women's and is still hanging around here for the team racing. Of course, the title sponsor, APS. Annapolis Performance Sailing, Z-Block providing the uh, sunscreen for all the competitors, and Coral Reef Sailing Apparel, who's uh, the clothing provider. Well, um, that's enough filler. I think we're back into it now. Stanford and Charleston just off the line in yellow. Stanford, uh, best record, I think, of the regatta, and Charleston, nearly, nearly best record. In black. It looks like somehow, couldn't see how it happened, but somebody for Charleston looks like they're pretty deep coming off the line. Can't quite see the numbers, but. So, looks like Charleston might have the one, though. Uh, so, first and sixth. So, if you're Yale, or excuse me, Stanford, you might be looking at a play two opportunity. But whoever that middle boat is there for Charleston's wound up in something. Maybe doing their teammate in the one a favor trying to go play one. Quick correction, I said Stanford had the best record. Yale, in fact, has the best record. Both of those teams have one loss, but Yale has one more win at the moment. As we see the one boat luffing hard, slowing down, looking for a play just off the starting line. Charleston's record is seven and three. They currently sit in fifth. Well, looking pretty good in this one, actually, as they're able to execute that pass back with some amazing speed from this far left boat. That looks like boat 12 to me which would be someone, someone fast. I'll flip through our notes Should be here. Juan, yeah, I think that's Juan. Juan Magley, a two-time Olympian in the laser class sailing for Charleston. And he's quite speedy. I see tax there. It looks like crossing. So Charleston looks like they might have play one with a one-two, but no ace in the hole as they've got that six. So super important for that last guy for Charleston to try to catch one boat make this a stable combination for Charleston. And Stanford spreading it out here, sending one boat far to the left, now tacking back, trying to get these things unbalanced. But th I, th I like the position here from Charleston. I think they're doing a good job keeping in touch with those boats while moving up the course fast. And I believe that's Ben Spector, the other boat for Charleston out in the lead with Mac Mace and Corey DeColibus there in sixth. But as you see, those, those guys have some good boat handling and they're trying to get an attacking duel with one of those Stanford boats and grab an ace. What happened to my notes on Stanford? Do you have them? I had some I don't I know anything about Stanford. Yeah, I had some excellent well, notes. You already told Stanford. us about the what is this, Kung Chu Panda or something? What's his name? Uh, you know, Kieran Chung. Yeah. Kieran Chung Fu Fighting, but Chung that's Fu just fighting, one of many nicknames I have written down for this team. I want to get a chance to say them all eventually. Oh, boy, and it's getting light and choppy there on that right side as we saw Ben Spector and Ali Blumenthal just kind of park it on that starboard ley line, it looks like. Can't forget about the umpire chop, too. Even if it was perfectly flat out there, these umpires um, need to be so close. Their chop is always a factor as well. And looks like Juan sort of slowing up there. Thinks Ben Spector might need a little help coming out of the right. So does Spectre have a piece there? He looks like, yeah, he's crossing. So I'm actually going ahead of Juan. So nice one-two there, but 
as we said before, no ace in the hole, and Stanford's first boat is hot on their tail. So got to keep racing forward if you're Charleston. Fleet race down the run. Looks like they got a nice little puff there. Hopefully they can extend. <laughs> Hopefully. Is that bias enough for you, Nick Johnstone? Now it's coming out. Wow, I found my notes. Thank God. Got them online here. Who's that uh, lead boat for Stanford closing in on Mark II? Can't the yellow the yellow sails are the hardest to read the sail numbers. I think we can catch a hull number. Yeah, no idea. But I'll tell you, the Stanford team they gave us some uh, some <coughs> good background information. Um, on a more serious note, Kieran Chung is actually um, on the uh, Youth America's Cup team, the Red Bull. AC45 series going on this summer. So he'll be out in San Francisco doing a bit of that. I'm a little jealous. Yeah, it looks fun. You see Stanford doing a pretty nice job here high lowing. They've got whoever that second guy is going high on. I believe it's Juan and their other guy going low trying to get around Juan Magley and try to put him back in fifth or sixth. And there that goes that low boat. Juan's going to have to tack here. Uh, excuse me, going to have to I don't jive. think he wants to tack. That's not a good thing. <laughs> it's not the play for sure. And I uh, can't quite see where Ben Spector, the one, is. If we go to the right a little bit here with our camera, we'll be able to see the one who should be staying close. There he is going backwards to stay close and help out Juan. All right, moment of truth here is Charleston's going to try to recover and get that one, two. The other option back. is uh, for Juan, if he doesn't think, if he feels unstable, he can always go back, grab one Stanford boat and take him to Housetown, put him in sixth, and go into a play four. Oh, instead he gets hooked. Stanford hooks Magley, and that's going to let both of their boats, inside and outside, swing by. Oh, but there's uh. Juan, grabs one, yep, and looks like draws a foul. So now Charleston could be looking at a play four with handsome Mack there, going to get an opportunity to do his favorite thing and put a little gap in. And Zeke, just just as you said, uh, you know, mentioned his two choices, I think Magley made up his mind. And, I think uh, so, too. Went for that play four. That was pretty effective. Call that a whip and dip. Really? It's not a term I'm familiar with. I like no, that. I don't, you, know, you wouldn't be. But, yeah, so it looks like <coughs> Spectre holding on to the one there. Uh, looks like Magley will be in fourth and doing a nice job staying to the outside to push this thing around. And uh, we'll see if Matt can get a little bit of a gap in here on this last Stanford boat. If you're curious, the red and blue boats you just saw come through the screen is navy and blue. Hobart William Smith in red. That is race 78, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But for now, let's stick with Cougars Cardinal as they come up to mark three. And did they lose the one? I, I, I'm not sure that they have. I think I think that's a little trap there from Spectre. Yeah, I think he's he's entered the zone clear ahead. Tough. Does he think he entered the zone? No, I think he's, no, he's giving there, it so. up. All right, so Stanford does have the one, and Charleston's thinking play two here. Can they close that door? I don't think you're right. I think Spectre's still out in front there. Oh, really? If I can, I he think, he, I think he's just went wide. And it looks like green flag there from an umpire. So let's see if Spectre does, in fact, come around there in first. Not much of a gap here if you're Charleston looking at a play four. Oh, and he's sort of yeah, still got the one, but really not tight. controlling that. Those, neither those team, two boats are even. Yeah, neither team necessarily committed very hard to a play. But it looks like actually somehow all the Cougars got around Stanford. So Cougars looking at a play two now. Yeah, either way at this point, 2-3-4 uh, is just fine, or if they can catch that one boat, they can always seen a little bit of uh, Seen a little bit of every play here. All right, well, we'll check back in with them. Let's just take a brief look at the red and blue boats. That's um, uh, Hobart William Smith in red, navy in blue. This is race 78, and it looks like Hobart William Smith with a 2-3-6, possibly, navy with a 1-4-5. That'll be a good one for this, looks like, last spot shaping up for the gold round between those two guys are racing pretty close. Yeah, I'm not sure if our online results are totally up to date, but the way I see it now, we've got uh, those two boats tied with five and six records tied for that last spot. Those two teams, Hobart, William Smith, and Navy. Does look like advantage Hobart here early in that one, though. Yes, indeed, that boat in the middle there 
needs to get out of six, and right now they're buried under a couple bugs. So why don't we pan back to our last leg here between Charleston and Stanford, Charleston and black, Stanford and yellow, and now it looks like Charleston has gone ahead and taken the one, vote 10, which is Mac Mace and Corey DeColibus sailing all the way from that deep six we saw them before, now they're winning. But not necessarily right on top of the biggest threat for Stanford, as you see a little bit out of phase there, so Mac and Corey need to look to sail back to those guys and if they're trying to go play one. It looks like they are trying to go play one there. I think that's Ben Spector. Oh, sorry, that's Juan Magley just shooting out from underneath that Stanford boat. A nice job there by Mac Mace and Corey DeColibus doing a little pass back. And let's see if Ben Spector now, the last boat for Charleston, can grab that ace in the hole we keep talking about, Put maybe even put a little gap in. You saw boat 10 for Charleston diving down there, footing off to really solidify that one, two. And it looks like maybe they're even laying the finish they might be stacked up there on the starboard ley line. So it looks like Mac Mace and Juan Magley going to get across in the 1-2. And I'm, I'm, we may, I wonder if we missed a foul or something for Stanford because that last boat for Stanford sure did fall behind. They did, yeah. And they were all, all the boats were uh, together there at the Mark IV. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a foul. All right, well, that's going to be a win for Charleston. Now we can conveniently stick with the red and blues. It's all right. Fist bumping. <laughs> Didn't mean to, but couldn't help. No, it. you kept your composure there nicely. I was proud of you, Zeke. Uh, midshipman Navy in blue, trailing Hobart William Smith in red. Although this does not look stable to me. A two, three, five for Hobart William Smith. A one, four, six for Navy. And this is, uh, this is what we like to see in team racing. It's going to come down to execution here. Yeah, although it doesn't look like any either team is really that eager to execute anything, does it? No, I think the way they're spread out at the moment, neither team is really willing to commit to anything. But And you see that a lot. Same thing down in Austin last year with some tricky, puffy conditions. A lot of times when it's spread out, you can just fleet race until it sort of shapes up for you and go from there. The orange and green boats that just went by would be Hawaii versus Roger Williams. Hawaii was in orange. Roger Williams was in green. They're on their first beat. But I think we can stick with this uh, red and blue race between Navy and Hobart. Navy and blue, Hobart and red. Looks like Navy now has snuck into the one. So it looks like sort of a, boy, it looks almost like there's three ties going on the, from our vantage point, at least on this downwind. Navy certainly inside there, the one doing a nice job bumping. Let's see if their teammate can get inside and get around. So Navy hanging on to the one. But it looks like Hobart's going to come around eh, with a two and a tie. So. If I'm that last boat for Navy that you see there, you're thinking about staying conservative to go into play four, though you can see how deep the six is for Hobart anyway, so maybe they're going to keep racing forward a little bit. And those two Hobart boats got a lot of work to do to get their teammate out of sixth. Yeah, as you said, Navy not even looking back at the moment. No reason to gap when the gap's already there. But they do have to watch it on this last leg because you can, you can already see Hobart getting into position trying to slow this race down. It looks like Hobart's already deciding to sort of split. Usually you see a double team there on the biggest threat from Navy, but it looks like they've sort of split already and should be trying to do uh, some mano mano battles here. So if you're the one for Navy, you should try to look for the more advantaged 
duo there and try to go do a 1-3 pass back. We see Hobart going down there, getting aggressive on both those pairs. And now is the time where Navy really needs to start thinking about sailing back to that sixth and starting to put this gap in. It's kind of going to be the first one. If Hobart can control those guys earlier, then they can get back to the sixth, then it's going to be over quickly for Navy. And you see the one for Navy can't even be bothered to sail back there. They're just <laughs> thinking, they're like, yeah, you guys should go play four. Forget this thing. So let's look for this last Navy boat to start sailing back to the last orange boat. And there you see He's they are right now. Looking under the boom, that skipper just peeking underneath. That's boat 17 for Navy. So that would be, be the, middle boat. the middle boat. And tacking away now. I think so that middle boat, ship. I believe, is Taylor Van, a local here from Tampa Bay. And, and Van there tacked away from that pair. I think he was going slow and he wanted to stay on the lifted tack. But Danger. now look what happens. That Danger. boat six is not controlled by anybody, a sixth-place boat. And and if he gets a lift here, as it looks like he's getting, this could pu possibly put Navy in the six. So things change so quickly. In but this here this looks like Navy's hanging on to that third spot. So this the first wow. Hobart boat you see there no, right now on starboard needs to get aggressive. So I think it was a one four six just changed into a one uh, one four five changed into a one three six, and I didn't think there was any way that the Hobart boat in last was ever going to get back into it. Jeez, it's wacky out there. Sure is, and wow, oh, that's going to be a foul. And now Navy oh, runs Navy's away. Navy's going to just sail away with this one now. Looks like they're probably laying the finish. They've got a good bit of breeze there. So, that was wow, that was a little bit of unorthodox team racing by both teams on the last beat. The one boat, the high bo uh, low boat from um, Hobart William Smith fouling the last minute there, just low handing boat it off. For, for Hobart would be, I think, Lewis Padnos with Jane Rue. Funny so. you mentioned Jane Rue. She's a econ and environmental studies double major from Princeton, New Jersey. Did her sailing growing up at Bayhead Yacht Club. So there you have it. Navy First. with another win, and that's this was a big one. You know, these two teams, as we said, right on right on the line there, on so the verge, and that'll break the tie for sure. So Navy now two and zero oh on the day, and as we mentioned before, had a big win against Boston College yesterday. So good for those guys. They're really uh, really getting this thing done. Well, next up on the course, we have... It's Hawaii and Raj are racing right now in green and orange, I think, going around the leeward mark, and not a big surprise. Roger Williams looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, they've got a, they got the 1-2. Not not exactly a runaway. I mean, this is, this is about the same distance we just saw Navy and Hobart. Um, Navy and Hobart, who just finished. Breeze okay. has been steadier for the last couple races, it seems, as well. A little there surprised that uh, Roger Williams, their last boat, who's that ace in the hole, kind of let some separation happen. They got to the left. Can't see their number, but... And again, I have to apologize. I mixed up the colors there. This is this is in fact Hawaii in orange and uh, Roger Williams in green. Did I mess it up or did you mess it up? No, no, I mixed, I messed it up last night when I made the graphics at 12:30 uh, at night. Why? You know, you gotta get to work earlier. I don't know what uh, you're doing I did. all day. I did, but ICSA changed their mind three times this week about exactly what this rotation would be. I think you were lollygagging around yesterday, not doing your job. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I was working hard all day. And look how choppy it is. And I think they are sailing against that current line Justin Law so kindly pointed out for us via the internets. But yeah, Raj looks pretty comfortable there. So I just heard some horns. I'm thinking we got a St. Mary's versus Wisco race coming up. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it, looking at the sails from here as we um, pull back and check out the starting line, this will be the white sails with the blue and pink stripe on them. 
back at the starting line. I think we're coming up to a start if they haven't started already. They have, in fact, just off the line, and it looks like Wisco uh, in a controlling position here off the line. Two pairs, but that last place boat is pretty far back. Looks like that is uh, Andrew Fox, the middle boat for Wisconsin. I believe so. Yes, it is, with Kirsten Reeser. So he's got some work to do to get out of there, but the, the top two Wisco boats controlling the sides. Look Those how guys slow are fast. boat 16 is. Well, he is they are <laughs> fast, but look Relatively. how slow they're going right now. Yeah. And just so you have some idea that how long this rotation is taking, Charleston and Stanford, who are now four races ago, just got to the rotation beach to rotate boats. So this whole thing is taking a little bit of time. Well, meanwhile, that St. Mary's boat, the low boat for St. Mary's, just came right up the middle, got lifted up and over boat 16, and um, easily sails into the one. So Wisco now thinking play two and getting right on it. Big lee bow there from Wisco boat 16 on the far side as they continue to control on the near side, but they've got to get their teammate out of last. Meanwhile, St. Mary's trying to spread it out here. And these are certainly not favorable conditions for a guy like Andrew Fox, this light, choppy stuff. And he's quite tall and not very light. No, he's a laser full rig sailor. Look how spread out this race is. Who knows what's going to happen? This left pair could be miles ahead or miles or behind. Miles behind, who knows? Well, we're working our way through this rotation, about halfway done with the races we needed to do today in order to get into the championship round. This is race 80 out of 91, at which point we'll take a short break and come back with the championship round, the top eight teams facing each other in another round robin. Well, now the uh, fleet coming back together Push in a little bit here, and Zeke, that pair that you talked about, looks like they got a massive lefty. Look at this. They're going to come right over the top of everybody, and that's going to put Wisco back in the one. So Wisco may have a play four now, thanks to the uh, breeze coming out of the left-hand side of the course. Those other two boats, 16 and 17, really picked up on it nicely, and they are, it looks like double teaming at this point, trying to set up a one four five gap. So the course out there being a pretty big factor in the last few races. As the breeze continues to clock left as the day wears on. We're now at max high tide, I think, as well. The current line should be swirling the other direction in the next few minutes. So Wisco leading into the mark with the one. Their teammates in the 4-5 St. Mary's. Looks like still pushing forward, but I think we're going to see a play from St. Mary's here at the top mark as we follow them to the left. There we go, the top boat around. St. Mary's two and three boats rounding the first mark as well. And yep, there goes the sails luffing immediately for St. Mary's. Big moment coming up. Let's push in and get a close view of this mark rounding. St. Mary's going low, trying to get overlapped before mark two. Wisco. Oh, that first place boat from Wisco rounding mark two. I don't think that was probably the play. I think they could have helped their teammate out because he's getting hung out to dry. St. Mary's is making this leg take a very long time, getting their six back in it now. And forcing boat 16 low as well. So Wisco just barely hanging on with a 1-4-5. They're doing a good job keeping track of this last place boat. Not anymore. Oh, but now being forced around the mark and boat 17 drops to the outside. No, he's still able to close the door. So Wisco does hold on there. But that last boat for St. Mary's now sailing free and clear to the inside, high on port. Uh, I'd say things shaped up pretty well there for St. Mary's. Nice execution if you're if 
you're a Wisco, I think you got to look a little bit earlier to play back and start gapping that six. Now we see that jive back onto port and this by Andrew Fox. It. And it looks like St. Mary's already starting to roll over the top in better breeze than that second place Wisco boat. Question on the internet, uh, were the coaches on the water like they were for women's? Um, no, I don't believe so because the rotation is happening in here. Um, the coaches are on the beach watching with binoculars. Um, we even had some coaches come over and watch us on our monitors for the uh, some of the more hype races because we've got the best view in the house. And that means you guys at home have the best view in the house as well. This is uh, unless you're in one of these hotels over here. They have a nice view. Yes, they got it pretty well too. But yeah, this is uh, this is an ideal setup for the folks at home. I think the teams are going to start pulling out some phones and iPads pretty soon if they want to. So see it's this. tough to tell how this Wisco guy on the inside here on port is doing. He's hanging. I thought I thought for sure St. Mary's was coming over the top, but that breeze filled in. He's got a more direct line to the mark and planing now. <laughs> Raging. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that six continues to fall behind for Wisconsin. So if St. Mary's can get any little piece of this second Wisco boat, it's going to be all over. And I believe that looks like it's George Cooch, which is exactly who they would want for Wisconsin. They're fighting in that second spot. He's extremely fast. But is he fast enough? Double the jive there. Yeah, the one there doing a nice job setting up a little bump for George to get around. Uh, that could be a fouling scenario. You gonna you gonna call that from all the way back here? No, <laughs> I said could be. Let's see if there's an umpire call. Nobody making any moves. I don't Doesn't see any arms like in the air, so I think it's so a well executed for Wisco. Very nice mark trap from Wisconsin. And this is a this is a big race for St. Mary's. Well, well, they're all big races. They're all big races. Both of these teams in uh, fighting to get back in that top. Eight St. Mary's. St. Mary's pretty comfortable. Wisco probably going to be on the outside looking in. But as far as St. Mary's hanging on to that top top four line there, this is definitely a race that they need to have. What's going on in the front? Although, would it count? What What's going on up here? We just saw a circle. We did see a circle. I can't imagine why. It was only one circle, wasn't it? No, there's it's the second circle. Two. Flat. Could that possibly be a Rule 42 going Could have been, or maybe it was a late call from the umpires. On the mark rounding. Wow. Could have been. That would be extremely late. Ex it would have been. But there you go. Comfortable play two now for St. Mary's. Well, that really turns things around, doesn't it? There it goes. That's going to be the end of the book on this race for Wisconsin. St. Mary's now almost halfway up the beat when that circle occurred. So as we come up to these last 10 or so races in this first round robin, uh, the big story is trying to get into this gold round. Um, looks like we've got Hobart, Navy, and BC. Two of them will make it. One of them will be sitting on the outside as it's shaping up right now. Um, we've got Navy to race against Roger Williams, who's sailing really hot right now. So that'll be a tough one for Navy. Hobart's got a race against St. Mary, so a tough one for Hobart as well. And BC actually has two more races against uh, Washington and Wisco, I believe. Um, so you would think for BC, those are two races that they got to have. Right. Um, harder ones for Navy and Hobart. And as it stands right now, that would uh, BC is one race off of those guys. So this could shape up to be uh, maybe even a tie-breaking situation for this last spot into the gold round. It is exciting having having such depth here at Nationals. You know, the opening round is, has been as exciting as the gold round uh, has been in past years. Absolutely. A lot of talent out here. And this is, again, this is a great uh, great reason for this switch to this first open round. Now all these guys in the past, you know, maybe Navy and, uh, and Hobart and BC wouldn't have actually gotten to race against each other. 
and that could have one of those teams leaving with sort of a bad taste in their mouth if they don't end up making the gold. But here they've all gotten to race each other, and um, it's all fair. We had a question coming uh, from our chat room. What is the current like? And, of course, well, we're watching on the monitor. It's just like as moving you are water. <laughs> the water tends to move in one direction on one side of the line and maybe on maybe a different direction or maybe at not quite as fast a clip on the other side of that line. Yeah, we've we've been watching from the same angle that you guys are watching from um, at home. And it looks like so far that current line hasn't really been crossed. But we have we have seen some passes made on that downwind leg. I don't know if it's just the wind or if it could be the current as well. I'm not a St. Pete uh, sailor myself. I consider myself a bit of a St. Pete sailor. I've actually had some people coming to ask me some local knowledge questions. However, I have never sailed here before. Never even heard of this as a sailing venue. Uh, St. Pete Yacht Club is, I believe, about four miles that away where I did a bit of sailing, but I have no idea what's going on. All I know is that the tide is high enough now that it's not stanky, and that's all I could really ask for.